Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of PT Educators, Professors of Profit Vlogcast. I'm your host and creator, Dr. F. Scott Feel. Uh, I'm here today with Dr. Casey Coleman, and I could not be more excited. He totally embodies everything that is uh, multiple streams of revenue. Uh, he wears several hats. Uh, one of the hats, though, that I brought him on to talk about this week is writing for journals, magazines, online journals. Um, Casey's dabbled in a bunch of all that, even to the point of doing some editing now. He's got a great story. Casey, tell the audience a little bit about your areas of expertise and what's kind of led you to writing and editing and where you're at today. Yeah, so first, it's, it's still great hearing doctor before my name because I never want to take that for granted. Mm -hmm. I remember being a pre-PT and even in PT school of saying, man, if I could just be a DPT, I'll be the happiest person alive. And, and I just never want to lose that gratitude for what I've now accomplished or what I've now reached. Um, so man, it's, it's just great hearing that. And, and thanks for inviting me on, on the blog cast. It's, 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 it, it should be a great time, but, um, in terms of how I got started with, uh, writing and editing and all that stuff was, um, I started even before graduation, I started, um, I kind of saw the writing on the wall, what was to come after graduation. I saw people talking about low income, student debt to income ratio, low Medicare reimbursement. So I got into a program called Smart Success PT because I was like, I do not want what they're talking about to happen to me. Um, so in that program, we were challenged to start putting ourselves out there. But I did not want to do videos at all. Like I didn't want to do live streams. I didn't want to do videos. I didn't want to I didn't want to do that. So I turned to writing because it just seemed a lot more easier. My face wasn't on there. I wouldn't be stuttering. They wouldn't be making fun of my hair if it wasn't cut, all that stuff. So I started writing and doing my, uh, my own blog and just staying consistent with that. Uh, so that turned into me finding, just Googling online and finding a platform called New Grad Physical Therapy. And when I saw that, I would be like, man, it would be amazing if I can get, a, if I can get something published on there. Shoot, I made it. I made it. And I'm not even graduated yet. Uh, so fast forward. Uh, I just submitted something just to see if they would take it, and they did. So I did that over and over and over again uh, until they liked what I was doing, and they added me on as a staff writer. So I started doing that and getting paid for it. Uh, then they added me on as a social media director, uh, then eventually as the um, publication director for New Grad Physical Therapy. Uh, then they switched their name to Covalent Careers Physical Therapy, um, but it's pretty much the same thing. It's just all under one roof now, and now I am the uh, publications director for Covalent Careers Physical Therapy. Uh, and now what I do is I take your ideas and turn them into a published article just like I wanted uh, to be done for me when I was in that spot of saying, man, it would be great if I could have something published on there. So that's really the, the kind of Cliff Notes version of my story of where I came from as to what I'm doing now in terms of writing. Yeah, and I've worked with Casey on a couple of articles for Covalent Careers, and it really is a simple, seamless process. Um, he does a great job of, of getting your ideas solidified and, and working through things and getting them to a polished final product. Um, Casey, tell our audience a little bit about why professors and academicians and clinicians should consider writing as a side stream of income. What are, what are some of the pros and cons to, to writing as a side hustle? Yeah, so some pros to cons to writing is that pros, people still need to hear our message, right? You no, know, people still need to see what PT is. They need to read about what physical therapy is. But oftentimes, like I said before, some people's story might be like mine. They, didn't want, they don't want to get on video, but still they want to grow their practice or grow their online business or get the word out there about whatever they're doing. People still read. People still listen to audio and st people still watch video. So if you can just do at least one of those, you're on a great track. Um, to pushing whatever your movement is forward. So writing is easy, number one. And two, we've done it since kindergarten. We've, we've been trained to write since kindergarten to first grade, to high school, to college, to the standardized test. We basically, by this time, we know how to write. It's, it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. Now all we have to do is get that idea on paper, polish it up a little bit, and boom, ship it out. So that's the easy part. That's the pros to it. Uh, the cons is, on the other side, some people don't like writing, and that's okay. There are other, other avenues, like I mentioned before, like videos and um, radio or podcasts, like we call it now. So that's really the only con, just for people who don't like writing. Like, that's the only thing I have in that box. Everything else is 
like do it, go for it. Why not say, say yes to as many opportunities as you can, if it works within what you're doing. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, I can't agree with you enough. It, it makes my uh, English major roots uh, heart <laughs> flutter just a little bit because, uh, you know, I really did enjoy writing and it was nice to kind of come back to that and circle back around and use my writing skills, uh, right. even in the healthcare field to kind of help people uh, learn more about the field of physical therapy, learn about diagnoses and treatments and really try to, you know, increase healthcare literacy just through, you know, our writing. And the cool thing you know, when we're writing for the general public, you almost have to bring it down a little bit and make it simple and simplify things so that people understand it. You know, when we Very graduate true. from grad school, we have a, I don't know, 100,000 new words in our vocabulary. And it's like, well, great, we paid a lot of money. We want to, you know, show everybody those $100,000 words that we learned. But, you know, at the same time, the general public doesn't know what half that stuff means. You know, I mean, we, we really got to keep things simple. And, and I think, you know, when you're writing, especially, like I said, for the general public, it's a lot easier than people think, you know, so it, right. it, if you're not that great at writing, it's okay. You're writing for a, a little bit uh, lower grade level and reading level um, because you want to get that message as simple as possible. So anybody can understand it. So, yeah, yeah. and the, sim and the more simple you make it, that just means the, the better you understand it. Exactly. That's, that's, that's what it really means because the people who you're writing to, especially if it's the general public, they have no idea what's right or wrong either. So to you and your colleagues, it may look like, oh man, why are you writing something like that? Why are you, why are you doing this? But at the same time, your colleagues aren't really paying your bills. The right. people who you're writing to, the people making it simple for are. So if you ever have that in your mind of like, oh, I don't want to write that because I'll get made fun of, doesn't matter. Because the people making fun of you aren't, aren't paying you. The people who are not making fun of you are paying you. So don't be selfish about your skills. Um, do it for something greater than yourself. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, you're just trying to help. You know, you're trying right. to come at it, you know, with a servant's heart and, and put out your best work to, to help the greater masses, right? Uh, if I'm treating patients one-on-one -on -one every day, I can only see about eight, eight patients a day, you know, 10 patients a day. If I'm writing an article, well, shoot, that may reach hundreds or thousands of people, um, you know, and I'm trying to help the, the greater good. That's all it is. I'm trying to push forward a, a message that will be more helpful to more people than just the eight to ten I see and put my hands on every day. You know, so that's why exactly. I love it. Well, Casey, if you were to give, you know, a, a tip, a pro tip or an expert secret about, you know, writing for, for articles and, and, and journal articles, what's one tip you would give to somebody new just starting out in, in the business and looking to just break in and, and start writing? Yeah, two things. We kind of talked about the one before is, is keep it simple. Um, now, Covalent Careers Physical Therapy, we're not necessarily writing to the general public. Um, some articles might be, uh, but for, for the most part, we're writing to like our colleagues. So even in that, we have colleagues at, at different spectrum. We have pre-PTs, we have new grads, we have people who've been treating forever. So even in that, so let's just say you're bringing a new idea to the table. Everybody doesn't know about your new idea or the way you treat or what you're thinking about writing. So make it as simple as possible. If you think it's too complicated, it probably is. So take it down to the bare bones. Like let's, let's start at the beginning. Like sometimes I get articles like they just go right into talking about the fancy words and the big hundred thousand word, hundred thousand dollar words that you talked about. Uh, let's, let's take a break. Let's take a deep breath and say, okay, what, let's introduce the topic first. Like we, let's, let's write, like, I have no idea at all about what this topic is. Let's introduce it first. Let's talk about the who, what, where, when, why, all the stuff we learned about in school. Then we can go in and talk about and tackle all the fancy stuff. So that's number one. Make it simple. Like I, the reader, have no idea what you're talking about. Even if it's a total knee replacement and I know what that is, let's start from the beginning. So that's number one. Number two is let's make it like, this is more of a formatting thing, but let's make it as much as like an outline as possible, especially in today's day and age and kind of the platform that I work for. Um, people's attention spans are very um, short, even in video, even in podcasts, same thing with writing. If you guys are scrolling on Facebook or Instagram, you're still reading. And the same thing applies to articles. When think about your own habits, when you're scrolling through, 
when you're reading an article, you like big bullet points, you like one, two, three, four, five, you like lines, you like all that stuff. When you see a big block of paragraphs, you're like, oh, I'm just tired looking at that. So let's let's make it as simple as possible one, then let's make it as as broken up into bite-sized pieces, as many bite-sized pieces as we can so that we can keep that reader engaged and read everything that you want them to read. So those are the two big things as, as like my pro tips as someone new writing or someone just beginning and someone looking to send an article my way. Yeah, I love those tips, Casey, because I mean, realistically, like you said, our intention spans are getting shorter and shorter these days with social media. You know, it used to be, uh, you know, 30 second clips for the MTV uh, editing age. Now it's eight to 10 second clips for the social media age. So, right. you know, I get it, man. Those, those yeah, and, and that goes for adult learners too, right? A lot of our audience, oh, yeah. maybe adult age, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, that's all you got. You know, that's, that's all they can comprehend it in one sitting, you know, the, for them to actually process the information. So got to keep it short, got to keep it uh, digestible bullet points. Like you said, that's great tips. That's the word. That's the word. Casey, thank you so much for your time and for coming on the vlogcast today. Uh, you know, I just, I can't thank you enough. I love everything you're doing. I love following your trajectory. Um, where can the audience reach out to you if they have more follow-up questions or they just want to see what you're up to these days? Yeah, so you can reach me personally at my Covalent Careers email. That's Casey at CovalentCareers.com, C-A-S-E-Y at CovalentCareers.com. Uh, you can just send me an email and say, hey, I heard you on F. Scott's podcast. I have this idea. I'll keep it super personal. Then we'll go from there and we'll make this um, idea happen. You can also go to covalentcareers.com, uh, then go to physical therapy, their physical therapy tab and kind of see, OK, how are the articles written? How is the style? What what do they even write about? Is my idea already written about? Uh, can I do a spinoff on, on an idea that I have in mind if it's already written about? Uh, and just kind of get a feel for what we kind of do and how we kind of write uh, before reaching out. So once once you do reach out, boom, boom, bam, your article is there and published. So that's where you can find me and uh, we'll make your, your idea happen. Awesome, Casey. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate you coming on and keep all the great work up. Definitely. You too. You as well. Thanks, bud.